violence can happen to anyone, regardless of age, sexual orientation, or gender. The National Domestic Violence Hotline says there are a whole range of actions that are considered abuse, from threats and intimidation to using children or money as ways to make you feel like you have no control. They have a list of red flags you can run through, asking yourself, do they keep you from seeing certain family members? Do they stop you from making your own decisions? Do they pressure you to use drugs or alcohol? There's a full list on their website, which we've linked at kens5.com. Here in San Antonio, Family Violence Prevention Services offers in-person help. They say even if you don't feel like you're at a crisis point yet, reach out. To potentially save your life, and if you have children to save their lives, and to save your family from perpetuating the cycle of domestic violence into the next generation. Even if it doesn't escalate, you don't deserve to be treated with any of these behaviors. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. You hear this guy arguing with the hotel clerk and he, you know, is like, hey man, I need you to do this, whatever. Guy's clearly got some muscles, whatever, and his lady's just like on her phone talking with somebody else. And, and what's gonna happen here is now they're gonna start arguing with each other and she raises her finger and now they're having a discussion and she backs up a little bit and now he grabs a hold of her and twists her arm. And now they're having a high volume discussion as he and his big manliness there is going to try to maul and manhandle her and tell her what to do while physically forcing her. Now there's some interesting stuff here as he has a hold of her arm and still has her in that and she's gonna go back to her phone like this is a normal everyday occurrence and take her hand back while the guy's arguing and complaining to the clerk. Now, she goes back there and he actually rips a fanny pack off of her and pushes her. So she's not having that and gives him a good front push kick, a second push kick, and now a third kick with the right foot to drive him off. Now, I don't know what ended up happening from there. That's all the surveillance footage we have, but it's gonna give us some significant lessons. Let's Kirsten buckle up. Kirsten Stewart. Kirsten, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start with the basics. Uh, we all know that abusive relationships don't all look alike. What are some of the key factors that you look for? Absolutely. If you're a, a family or friend or even just a, a concerned uh, member of the community, you want to notice if somebody's changing their behavior, if they seem to be afraid of their partner, if somebody who is enthusiastic and exuberant is all of a sudden very quiet or shy. Um, certainly, if you see, you know, bruises or cuts that can't be explained, um, but that isn't always the, the case. Sometimes the scars are very much inside. So if, if you do see or are concerned about domestic violence, ideally, you can find a quiet time to talk to the person you're concerned about and really just ask them. We encourage people not to blame somebody, not to shame, to just make themselves available to have a conversation. And in the Gabby Petito case specifically, we see that police cam video where she seems upset and he has scratches on his face. How can you differentiate whether someone is truly in danger versus a couple that's having a, an argument or, or, you know, having some sort of breakdown? You know, that is a hard question. And if you're, you know, far away and out in public, you can't always tell. We suggest you always take your cue from the person who, who seems potentially to be the victim. Again, are, are they afraid of that person? Are they trying to avoid that person? Are they, you know, sometimes the person who takes all the blame isn't necessarily the person who's doing the harm. So we always recommend that you, you try not to escalate the violence. You certainly don't want to do that. Uh, have, you know, getting in a confrontation with someone is not recommended. Again, ideally, you would try to take that person to the side if you can separate the two people have a conversation, offer you know, resources. There's a, a national domestic violence hotline number that you can share. But really, it's about asking the person what they want, uh, what they need, and if they feel safe. So that it, let's say, for example, a 911 call is made. What resources do police departments have to help victims and survivors? And are there specific police departments that have procedures that, that are best practices in this situation? There's been extensive training thanks to the Violence Against Women Act for law enforcement. 
And that doesn't mean everybody does it perfectly right all the time, um, but we do see a m many um, better practices happening. You know, one of the ideal situations is that you actually bring a domestic violence advocate out with you um, on a call for domestic violence so they can you know, take the person aside, have a conversation. You want police to de-escalate the situation as much as possible, question the people separate and apart from one another. Uh, often if there are children in the home, we also ask that police officers pay attention to the needs of the children. Uh, again, not asking the children to necessarily choose you know, one parent over another, that's a deeply traumatic experience for a child, but to be sure that there's also someone that the child can talk to and that the child's trauma from that experience is also addressed. So much to consider, and yet we all know that when victims try to leave these types of relationships, that's when it's most dangerous. Many choose to stay in these relationships. What steps can be taken to ensure that there is safety both in or out of that relationship? Well, we strongly recommend someone who's concerned about domestic violence to talk to a domestic violence advocate. They can help that person develop what we call a safety plan. And that really depends on the unique circumstances of that person. You help them identify, do you have a place to go if you need to? Do you know where your car keys are? Do you have what we call a go bag? Um, important, uh, like your birth certificate, important papers, any medicines. So if you do need to leave a home quickly, um, you can just grab it and go. There are many domestic violence agencies across the country. As I said, there's also the National Domestic Violence Hotline who can uh, be reached via email, via phone, via chat. Um, it's a great place to start, even if you're not necessarily ready to leave or if you're just a concerned friend or family member, they can walk you through the steps um, that are tied to this uh, person's particular situation. And if someone is seeking help, where do you counsel them to seek help first? What should the first step be? So most people actually reach out to friend or family first. Some people will talk to their um, faith leaders, uh, healthcare providers we think are another wonderful resource, uh, especially because you can have the privacy to talk to them about what may be going on as well as what may be the health consequences of violence. Most people don't actually go to the police first. Uh, and again, we, we strongly recommend the, a call to, to a domestic violence advocate. Many domestic violence programs just have someone you can talk to. You don't have to be ready to, to leave the relationship or um, run to a shelter. It can just be a person to, to talk to to start thinking about your situation uh, and what might be your options. Kirsten Stewart, so much valuable information. As the director of Futures Without Violence, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, and thank you so much for covering this story. We really appreciate it. Well, we're grateful to you. So if you or someone you know may be a victim of domestic violence, regardless of gender, you can call the National Domestic Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 7233. Or you can also text START to 88788. These secret signals and messages save people's lives. In 2021, a good Samaritan noticed a teen doing this and called 911. I've been following this Toyota Corolla from Madison County. The female in the passenger side, brunette, motioning for help, called 911. She was giving the TikTok signal, uh, the, je the hand gesture signifying that she needed help. They apparently learned the hand gesture after watching this demonstration on TikTok of a woman using the signal as her abuser stood in the background. Here's how it works. Place your hand like this, palms out, then tuck your thumb into the center of the palm and cover it with your fingers. It's a way to subtly let others know you're in distress without having to verbalize it. Just all one fluid movement and it says, I need somebody to check in with me in a safe way. I step in and ask if there was something wrong with the order. In 2021, a Florida restaurant manager was a hero for spotting signs of child abuse while an 11-year-old customer was sitting with his family. When the order came to the table, I observed that the boy was denied food. The man told me that, no, that was everything okay and the boy was okay and he was going to have his dinner at the night at home. This uh, was super strange to me. She noticed a bruise on the boy and created this secret sign to ask if he needed help. I showed him and he nodded his head yes. 
and I could saw that he was super quiet and sad. She called 911. Orlando Police 911. We have some customers here with two kids. One of the kids is with a lot of bruises. Police arrested the stepfather, Timothy Wilson, for child abuse. Officials say he withheld food and water from his preteen stepson and forced him to do military-style exercises. Upon searching their home, police said they found several objects used as weapons along with handcuffs and ratchet straps used to tie the victim up. Wilson was convicted on several counts of child abuse and neglect in a Central Florida court. The mother was charged with two counts of child neglect and failure to protect the child. It's a 911 call from 2019. This dispatcher will never forget. 911. I would like to order a pizza. You called 911 to order a pizza? The caller wasn't really calling for a pizza. No, 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 you're not. I'm getting you now. It took just a moment for dispatcher Tim Tenike to realize this Ohio woman was making a secret plea in code. What apartment? The other guy still there? Yeah. I need a large pizza. All right. How about medical? You need medical? No, with pepperoni. All right. We'll get him going. Thank you. She didn't go away from the story that she wanted a pizza. She stuck right to it. I knew there was something else going on. The dispatcher alerted police. Domestic violence. Turn your sirens off before you get there. Caller ordered a pizza and agreed with everything I said that there was domestic violence going on. When police arrived, they found the 911 caller's mother was being assaulted by a boyfriend. Thinking to myself, okay, I need to call 911, but how do I get him to stay in the house so he will be taken out in handcuffs? And I just thought, pizza. I was worried. When I said, no, 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 <laughs> like, I was like, don't hang up on me. A desperate message for help was printed on a Grubhub delivery order in June of 2022 by a woman who needed to be rescued. It was a strange message because you could see that it was wrote like in a hurry. It wasn't correct. So we could see that it was someone that was in, in distress. Please call the police, the note stated under additional instructions. Please don't make it obvious. The order was sent to this restaurant in the New York City of Yonkers. When the two late night shift employees saw the note, they called 911. Police responded to the delivery address given for the order listed. There, they arrested a 32 year old man who was charged with raping a 24 year old woman. Thankfully, the girls paid attention. We always watch the notes because we don't want to make mistakes on customers' orders. Yeah, or I was assuming maybe she told him, listen, I'm hungry. Can we order some food? And that's her thinking like, I can send a message. I just, I still can't believe that it happened. The number of people experiencing domestic abuse is climbing. Between March and June, calls to police about domestic disturbances were up by 12% across Canada. And with more of us interacting online than ever before, support groups are navigating helping people without leaving a digital trace. Joining me now is Andrea Gunraj from the Canadian Women's Foundation. Good to talk to you today. Thanks for having me. So you've come up with a signal people can use on video calls. Let's take a look at that. Oh, uh, can you share that banana bread recipe? Oh, sure. It's, it's actually my mom's banana bread recipe, but it's pretty foolproof and it's super easy. Oh, well, I appreciate it. I know your mom is a great baker, so I should be good. All right, so walk us through this. What should someone do if they see that signal? Well, that signal really means I need somebody to check in with me safely. So if you're in a video call and somebody puts their hand up and does this, it means reach out to me at a safe point in time. You can, of course, ask yes or no questions so that you're not asking anything um, too revealing, just in case somebody is being monitored or um, being watched. And really, it's a matter of you taking the lead from the person who's saying that they're experiencing something really difficult and they need the support. It's being that safe person and letting somebody know that you will support them and you will not judge them, you will not disbelieve them, but you will take their lead and hook them up to good services in your neighborhood. Why does there seem to be a correlation between pandemics or natural disasters and gender-based violence? 
Well, we know gender-based violence overall is really high in Canada. On average, one, uh, a, one, a woman is killed every six days in Canada by her intimate partner. So this violence is already at pandemic level. It's a pandemic within pandemics. This is what the UN has called it. So, you know, it's the stressors, the concerns that happen now will make those violent situations more common. But I've got to be clear that just because something is stressful doesn't mean that violence is inevitable. Lots of us are feeling the stress right now, and we're not using using violence in our relationships. So when that baseline of control and misogyny and really behavior that's disrespectful is already there, this violence can increase. But there are things we can do about it, of course. What can we do? Well, you know, one of the things that I think is really important for everybody to know is that they have to be the kind of person that somebody can speak to. Most people do not go to the authorities when they're facing this violence. They might feel that it's very unsafe to do so. So those of us who are around them are really important to be there, to be the kinds of people that will listen and that they know they can reach out to. And I think it's always important for everybody to know three services in their area that they can refer people to. So if somebody comes to them and says, listen, I'm really scared and I, I don't know what to do. Can you help me find something? We had those three services in the back of our minds that we can point people to. And these services will be able to support people in a way that we can't, but certainly us knowing this information and accepting somebody's voice and hearing what they have to say is so powerful in and of itself. You talk about resources. I want to first thank you, Andrea Gunraj, for joining us this morning. And I want to show our viewers right now uh, a board of information. If you are experiencing domestic abuse or are concerned for someone else, I want you to take a look at the screen. Here are some of the resources you can go to for help. You can also find those on your morning social media. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.